Making Fun with Edo Podcast. Hello, everyone. It's Podcast Edo back yet again with another video. And I. <coughs> wow. All right. Hello, everyone. It's Podcast Edo back at it again with another video. And this time, this is actually our brand new start of, of what we're doing for the podcast. Because now we actually have our new guest. This is our 14th guest named Ryan Shover. And of course, also on that note, there'll be more stuff to tell from right after this part. So please enjoy our interview. Here we go. And here is the 28th episode with our guest, Ryan Shover. How are you doing today, my man? I'm doing pretty good. I'm glad to hear that. So for this video, we're going to be asking questions about you. So one of my questions is, uh, so one of the things I've been seeing from your channel is that you do like uh animations which is like stop motion and i wanted to know like how did you um not only get inspired from it but what was like if, if it's even still there on your youtube channel what was the first time you got into stop animation and also on that note when was the um uh when was the first time you tried it so my inspiration for stop motion has to go with like growing up watching like nightmare before christmas mm. and uh even though i was young watching robot chicken yeah and uh those kinds of shows it made me realize wow you can do stuff with toys so uh my first stop motion I ever made is not even on my channel uh it was one i made when i was back in like probably middle school i found an app on my phone called stop motion studio and been using it since mm. and just kind of been playing with it and once i graduated high school i decided to buy the pro version and start uploading them on youtube nice so and i've came a long way for sure uh it's not that i'm not saying it's not that hard but it's it's been it a pretty long, long journey long, with though. it yeah <laughs> But I'm still trying to get better with Legos. Like Legos are a little bit more easier to do, but to do like more complex like fight scenes and stuff, I'm still working on that stuff there. Right. I'm still learning and trying to grow my craft as I go. It's it is it's uh it is a good start and like, you know, from what I've been seeing, like even though like I've uh not only just followed my friend here, but your your animations have really come a long way from when it first started to like where it is right now, and you know just keep up the good work. So one of uh thank you I my next that. thank you I mean I, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like when so, you go up to the store and they say have a good day or or enjoy the movie, and you're like you too. Yeah. <laughs> And I it's like, I just bought seeing, my ticket. <laughs> I remember seeing, I forgot who's the person that created this, but probably like on the screen to like wherever I'm pointing, there is like this person who does that type of thing. And it was like, it's like the way he does it, it's like slideshow memories. And it's like, I'm not sure if you've seen this, but it was like, this is dude that does the meme where it's like, he's like the same person, but he becomes like the teacher and him. And they would do like the, have a good day, uh, like you enjoy the meal type of meme. So I'll be, oh. I'll be sharing that along with like a lot of other stuff from uh, your channel. So, um, okay. so our next uh, question is, um, what was your favorite video of all time that you have uh, made on YouTube? Uh, that's kind of a hard question because I, there a lot of the projects I've done, I really enjoyed making but my all-time favorite would have to be it's one that's not even out yet it comes out i think it's going to be out this friday because i scheduled it last week mm. it's called sponge glock it's a uh, spongebob and he robs the crusty crab wow <laughs> with a glock yeah i, I mean that kind of like so, almost gives like 
almost skips the question that like usually like usually the last thing I ask for my interviews, but we'll we'll get to that as we go. So um let's see. I guess now we're moving on to like the usual thing of like favorites and first. So what would be um your favorite type of uh like favorite stop motion stuff and when was like the first thing that you saw? Uh my favorite kind of stop motion would have to be like I, I kind I really like Lego animations. They're pretty cool to watch. And uh what made me get into like doing Legos was watching this creator on YouTube by the name of Forest Fire 101. And he did those like little Batman stop motion animations and still works on them. He actually has done work for Robot Chicken and uh he he was a pretty big inspiration for me to get onto YouTube, like just like other YouTubers, but he was one of the main reasons why I got into YouTube. Gotcha. Is that um would that be like one of your like one of the collaborators you would like to work with along with YouTube? Like it, you don't have to like pick an only one, but it's like if that like one of the biggest ones you would like to work with along with YouTube. Oh, yeah. I would love to try to do some work with him in the future if I ever get into contact with him. Right, And right. there's a couple other people I'd like to work with, like Brandon Rogers. Have you ever watched him? Yes. Oh, yeah, man. I definitely have seen that. Even like the um the anime series from uh, Busy Pop of Hell of a Boss and also... Oh, like, I've seen some um, of that. And also, like, I definitely remember, like, I'm still, like, subscribed to him. I think... Uh, the moment I remember subscribing to him was uh, I would I would say back in like um, possibly like even before I did like you know made this channel not the podcast channel but like the fourth channel where I uh, rebranded myself but yeah I remember I subscribed I think at that time I believe this was the moment when he was doing uh the Power Rangers parody. I think that was the time. It was like Ray, like back in 2017. And of course, like um, earlier this year, I made a video about uh, all the vines that I posted from um, literally, and it was the year when Vine was closing. So in 2016, so that was technically the first time I actually seen him. I think that time it was, it was the moment uh, where he, he was grandpa. If you remember that where. Oh uh, yeah. The, the, the uh... The try the try the try me meme. That was the very first time I I remember, remember that seeing meme that. got me and into also him too. The, the creator, this was like based on like a person who actually does food cooking. Unfortunately, she has uh passed away, but he would do a tribute to that and like Aunt Frida, the person that uh that he was parroting, like she actually supported, you know the parody of 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 the and it's the, the meme is where he just like flops his head onto like the the kitchen and that that was usually like the biggest like every time like he like he and this is like kind of like like the thing where it's like it'd be funny if he has it like a description where he says i do my own stunts but he really does because it's like oh my it's like <laughs> i caught some of what you said my uh thing was breaking up Oh no no no! Bit, it's okay, I was saying but... like uh, the time when I met Brandon was uh, right around my Vine days, sort of. Like I said, when I was there, it was like the shortest time. Like I was literally on there when it was closing, and you know, I I made uh, I think around 50, 50 videos of it. And of course, uh, this will be in the link of the below, and also being shared, also being shared with us, like uh, like when I'm pointing my fingers, it'll also be shared for a bit. So there's that. But yeah, that was, um, I was saying like I was following him like during, uh, not even just the Vine channel, but, uh, when I did, uh, my YouTube channel, when I first started, um, excuse me, my comeback back at the time, because like the last time I really posted anything was right around 10 years ago. So 2013. And of, of course there's also like, which will also be in the link is uh the history of uh of what was my life like from uh YouTube you know and also um speaking of which uh it's now has been around 
five years since I've uh, did uh, YouTube. Like I'm, I'm very happy that I lasted this long. Speaking of which, I know we're still on favorites and uh, first, but for you, um, how long has it been since uh, you've been on uh, YouTube so far? Well, I've had a couple channels in my past. Uh, they're no longer active, though. Like, when I was little, I used to, like, make little uh, films on my, like, phone or on my iPad. And I got my first video camera when I was 12. And I would upload them on there, just, like, little home movie type stuff. But um, I don't really count that as being on YouTube because it was just something fun to do as a kid. Right. But it, once it, I there wasn't really like type of content really being made. It was just like I'm putting it out there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. when I got into YouTube more seriously was when I was a senior in high school. So that was about graduated in 2019. Okay. And then about ago. four four years, I think. Yeah. I think I might not, be wrong. Not, not that long ago. But that's 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 very awesome. So Speaking of which, I realized that like most of the stuff that you have in the background is like movies and stuff. So on that note, I would like to ask, um, what was your favorite movie? And if you could remember, what was the first movie that you could ever remember? The first movie I could ever remember when I was a child was uh, when I was three years old and my mom let me watch the movie Scream. Ah. <laughs> And I fell in love with that movie. And for Christmas later that year, she got me the box set when it was just a trilogy. And I still have that trilogy. And now I own the fourth and fifth Scream film. And I recently saw the sixth one. Right. And favorite movie? For a long time, my number one favorite movie would have to be Pulp Fiction by Quentin okay. Tarantino. Because I'm a yeah. big Tarantino fan. It did. But... Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, you're good. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say that um next year is gonna be like thirty and thirty years since they first uh uh released the film. Now probably prior to this, probably have probably been around like maybe thirty to thirty one years when they were, you know, making the film. But yeah. like the next year will be like thirty years since it all came out. Uh, interesting thing I thought about. So I'm like, for my main channel, like I usually go into like Japan stuff or just Asian stuff at times. And like one of his uh favorite films that was even not only the inspiration of Kill Bill, but also he used one of the characters that was in this movie called I'm not sure if you've seen it called uh Bow Royale. Oh, I have seen it. Yeah, the and it was um the. The very first, I, I'm not sure if the person that he used was in the second, because there's two Battle Royales, but, uh, oh. I actually just found out about that they made a sequel to that movie, and I haven't even seen it, but it's on Tubi. Yeah, and uh, so. one interesting thing, one of my, uh, I think, like, most of the people that were on there, from my knowledge, was uh, people that were from, like, Johnny's Jr., and also uh, one of my favorite people that were in there was... Uh, Aki, which was like the, the main girl character from the first one, and uh, I, which is her older sister in the sequel. So it was like, wow. So both uh, both the younger sister and the older sister was both in Battle Royale. And again, this was like uh, Quentin. One, I don't know if it's like it's top five, but it is it has been quoted that this is one of his uh, favorite movies of all time. And also beat Takashi, I liked his uh, character in there as well. Speaking of which, um, on that note, uh, do you have, like, a favorite place you would like to, like, go to, like, outside of, like, the state or even outside the country that you would like to travel to? I honestly want to travel around the world. I've never been out of the country, but my first place I'd like to go to is Japan because, uh, I like anime, and I've seen vlogs of people going to Japan. I, right, I don't know if you've right. heard of Max Mofo. Yeah, of course. He did yeah. a whole series where he went to Japan a couple times, and it just yeah. looks so cool. And the little shops, they have a lot of anime type of uh, memorabilia, like even of the older animes. And 
Right. I would love to go and sightsee some of the nature there too. Speaking of which, now that now that you mention it, um, now we're gonna move on to um, what was your first and favorite anime? My first anime, uh, I might pronounce this wrong. I never really was big into it, but it was my sister's favorite when I was younger, called mm. uh, Inu what Inuyasha. Inuyasha, like yeah, yeah. Oh my god, it's same here, man. Same here. Like, um, it's it's literally the same thing. Yep. It, and, it, uh, um, interesting enough, it, the anime it came out the year she was born, so that was something else right there. By the way, like, is uh, how many like siblings do you have? I just have one, and she's Same uh, here. L- older. little or older sister, older, gotcha. Like, she uh, got me into a lot of things growing up. Like, she got me into anime, yeah, uh, like, because she liked Inuyasha, and it was on Adult Swim. And I used yeah. to stay up late and watch Adult Swim with her. And we, and my favorite anime, because I know you asked me about that, is Cowboy Bebop. All right, yeah. Because uh, it was on Adult Swim, and right, I I just fell in love with that one. I wanted my next tattoo to be a Cowboy Bebop tattoo. Would it be like? Would it be the the saying that they would have at the end, or just like any of the characters? I want to get Spike's uh, ship tattooed, mm. which Man, is the Stingray. It's big. Like, where would you even put it, though? I was thinking about getting it underneath uh, my arm here. I got the hidden leaf symbol from Naruto right there. Oh, okay. You oh, see I see it. that. I see but that. I'm thinking that about getting like, it under it. Is that like your first tattoo on that note? Or... Oh, no. My first tattoo is uh, Luke Skywalker, right? Uh, nice. Right, nice. right here. And then I don't know if, that, if you could see it that well. But... I def- I, from the way this is recorded, it's probably, it'll like be showing you and me like, like, Kind of like flickering, you know what I'm saying? But it'll it'll definitely see it for sure. Okay. If it doesn't, I'll just uh, on that note, I'll just uh, have you like selfie yourself of like trying to take the picture, or just have someone take a picture of you. I actually have a picture on my phone that I could just send to you, and you can just nice, put it up on the nice. screen. Yeah, just in case. But um, let's see. On that note, let's see. Okay, now the next thing we're reaching into is uh. Your favorite food, and if you could remember your first food, what was what would it be been? Uh, I don't remember my first food. It's probably baby food or something. <laughs> but uh, my favorite food is a tough one because I'm not really a picky eater. I love food. I used to be pretty fat when I was younger, mm. and I still eat like I'm a fat boy. Like. <laughs> I'm trying to gain some weight though, because I've lost a lot of weight last year due to mm. some uh some situations I was going through. But uh, but my favorite all time food is probably pizza. Yeah. Oh my god. Because <laughs> with pizza, it, you could just put whatever you want on it. Really, like you could put chicken, pepperoni, yeah, yeah, veggies, yeah, chip, anything. Like I know it's like one of the things. Like that's a huge debate. Is like um. And this is is the pineapple on pizza. Like, um, for me, like I said, I'm like, you know, everything. So it's just like, how, how, like, how do you feel on like pineapple on pizza? Because I remember, and I think that's still probably a debate as much as tomatoes. Uh, I'm not a big fan of tomatoes, but I'll eat tomatoes if they're in something. I mean, Uh, yeah, it's. (laughs) But with pineapple on pizza, right? I uh. I used to not like it as much because I've had it once and I just wasn't a fan and I didn't dog people for liking it because, you know, we all, you know, different strokes for different folks. Right, right. But I recently had a pizza with pineapple on it and didn't realize pineapple was on it, but had chicken on the pizza as well. Yeah. And I actually liked it. So I don't know. I think pineapple on pizza is all right. I'm not going to (laughs) judge. Right, right. Speaking of which, um, I guess for like uh, I guess for like anime wise, so the, um, so one of my previous guests I've talked to over time, and I'm not sure if like you knew about this too. For me, this was like a complete shock. So one of my friends named uh, Noel Comics. Um, one of the things that we were talking about is that there was a station where anime and not only like Japanese stuff, but like a lot of stuff was on there. And it was called the International Channel. Like, have you ever heard of this 
channel before. Which uh, channel was it? You kind of broke up a little bit Sorry. in the audio. Um, the, the, have you ever heard of the international channel? Oh, uh, mm, I have not. Okay, but that's okay. Again, stuff will be shared. So basically, it was basically a channel where now it doesn't really have it anymore, especially since we got, you know, this platform right here of, of YouTube. But basically, back in that time, um, and this was uh, also talking to them again for the first year anniversary. It was like a kind of like a pay per view channel. Sometimes, depending on uh, where you are, it could be a uh, it could be like a free channel, and then other states it's like pay per view. But um, basically, it's where you could see like you know a lot of Asian stuff was uh, as Japanese music, uh, Korean music, anime. It just it had everything and it was like it lasted from like around i would say around the late 80s all the way to uh 2007 that's how long it lasted but it was a really interesting thing especially since uh also another thing um i'm not sure if you've heard about this too it was like a music video channel that was called like i'm not sure if you've heard of this have you ever heard of a music video channel called the box I have not, but I remember music video channels as a kid growing up, but right. I haven't heard of that one. That one, it was where you like, you could, um, it's where you could now, and they, and they made it to the point where they got internet, but you know, it was like the early access internet at the time. No disrespect to it though. It was yeah. basically where you could call it, you could call them up and you could request like a video of whatever's playing it was in um here in the US and Canada at the same time. And also once internet came, you could email them. And also if you had like kind of like your own type of music video, you could request that too. I think you just would have to like send in like your video and then call up dial it or you know, like I said at the time, since they had uh internet, email them and be like, hey. You got, I want you guys to play, you know, my song. And honestly, even on that note, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they did international requests where they showed music videos like outside the U.S. Not, not most likely like like stuff from like Britain, like like outside, outside, like pretty much just like we're talking like you know Asian. Like I do feel like that has happened. On that note, it's kind of funny because um the one of the artists I talked about previously, her name was uh, Coco Lee. She's from Hong Kong. And it turned out from my research of this, she was my very first uh, Asian artist I've ever seen in my whole life. Because, you know, and I actually kept thinking my very first was Japan, but it was actually in Hong Kong. And she's still around. And from that time, she released like two American albums in uh in here and like one of it was called do you want my love even another interesting fact was uh i didn't know that queen lativa had her own show but the fact she was on that too and I, my mom was even saying that she watched her show but just didn't see that episode out of all of them i'm like wow <laughs> but you know especially the inherited that's going to bring us to our next question is um my inheritance of it, it was basically from my mom because she studied it, but she didn't really, really kept on with it until like, you know, me and my, my, my little sister came into the world. So speaking of which, um, do you, do you know like how the first time you saw, like besides anime, like when you saw like the um, Asian culture, like what happened? Like, what was the experience of that? uh when it comes to asian culture and what i've seen from it it would have right. to be anime and also kung fu movies like bruce lee yeah and after seeing it like even with anime it kind of got me into martial arts mm. and learning about martial arts and learning about martial arts philosophies right and recently i was taking taekwondo which is a korean martial art yeah yeah and uh, i had a stop going because of my work schedule and uh it just affected me being able to make it there because 
getting off work and then coming home. And when I come home, I want to take a shower, eat something like eat some dinner and then go. But when I got home, it'd be like, you know, six, six thirty. And then I have to be there at like seven 30 and it's like a 20, 20, 25 minute drive to get there. So it's like, I just don't have enough time to relax for a little bit, take a shower, eat something. So I just had to cancel that. But I also took karate for uh, three years when I was living in Indiana. Nice. On that note, and, it's like, um, uh, like the original, like, um, was your original place like, it, like birthplace wise, was it in Indiana or, um, like, where you are right now? Current, like, not real location, but our friend here is from Texas. Uh, is howdy. <laughs> Uh, my, I, I actually, my family and I were all from Indiana, hmm. but over the course of like the past, like 20, 23 years, they've been moving to Texas. Like it started right. off with my, uh, I think my uncle moved to Texas first hmm. and then my aunt moved. And, uh, then after that, my grandparents moved here or before that, my other uncle moved here on my dad's side. Right. Then my grandparents moved here in 2013 while my aunt was going through a divorce. And uh, then out of the blue in 2020 during the pandemic, my mom and I were talking and she said, hey, there's no opportunity in Indiana for a film career. Right. And Texas is a big state. And there's a lot of opportunity here. Why don't you move down there? So mm -hmm. I thought about it for a couple of weeks and decided out of the blue, I called my uncle up. I was like, hey, you got an opening at your business so I can move down here? And he's like, yeah, sure. And you can live with me rent free. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. I'll, I'll move nice. down here and live rent free at your place and work for your business. Mm -hmm. And uh, moved down here in October of 2020. And then my mom followed me here in February of 2021. I helped her. I ended up going back to Indiana. I helped her move down here and we've been here since. And my mom's boyfriend just recently moved down here from Indiana. Hmm. So maybe my sister might move down here. I'm not sure. I mean, you might even have like the whole, like, side from, you know, all parts of your family even coming there. Speaking of which, um, so I remember last time I got the, like, I couldn't remember, but now I could actually say it from my Noel comics interview. So Previously, you know, my, my mother, she was uh, born in Lubbock. That was the part where she was born in. But she wasn't really raised there. She was raised in uh, California. And, of course, you know, with my backstory, I was, like, from originally born in Atlanta, Georgia. And then I grew up in Louisiana. And, like, currently, like, I'm living in uh, – I'm currently living in here, as you can see, like, Florida. And I've, yeah. I've been here for like quite, like literally right around the same time I did this, uh, my main YouTube uh, channel. So that's how long I've uh, been staying there for like literally around like five to six years. And it was for, interesting enough, speaking of film is, oh boy, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry about that. Okay. Um, speaking of film is that um, I came down here for, for film, which is uh, uh uh this video is not sponsored just like history lesson uh full sale university and then not only i recently just graduated from it for recording arts but when i finished that that was around uh may of 2020 dur dur during the seas so that was uh when i finished that but you know as a whole like i've just completed like full cell as an entire and just you know just uh con continuing just doing stuff here and especially pursuing on music now and of course you know really trying to get this stuff out as well so yeah i feel that's, that that's that's how uh the film for me it kind of like came in like around 2007 and at the time i was like using a vhs and then later on i just started with windows avs file cut pro and uh, what I'm kind of currently using right now, even for this episode, is uh, iMovie. Of course, I've been familiar oh. with Adobe as well with Photoshop and Premiere. And also, like, probably, like, I've, I've heard from one of my friends uh, that I've met over time. 
they got some new stuff to make for uh, Adobe for movie making as well. So it was that was really something. Um, so I guess like one not just because like there for us we have like a time limit if for those that are notices or don't notice it. For one, so one of our uh, one of my last questions I have for today is um what are the uh, next events that uh, you're planning for your channel and stuff like that? Well, before I answer that question, you mentioned that you went to full sale and yeah. I went to full sale too. Are you serious? Yeah, I went to. When was did, that? I went online in 20, oh, okay. uh, 2019 to 2021 and I got a bachelor's in digital cinematography. Nice, nice. So, Congrats, man. Congrats of uh, been like around a year or two since you graduated. Congrats. I didn't even know that. Wow. And and congrats to you on graduating, too. Thank you. Thank you. So I just wanted to mention that because you mentioned full of sale course, and I, I went to full sale, too. So we're bros. Yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> even like I, I mean, not even ironic. It's kind of like because I'm here and stuff, you know, I have like, of course, friends that also went here as well. And it's, um, so I'll show you some other friends that actually, like, I do have some friends that were in UCF, Valencia, and, you know, even um, uh, where the thing we usually, uh, for those that don't know, to connect with people like LinkedIn, this is where I usually connect with lots of other people from Florida and even, you know, global as well. So, uh, right, right. Um, what's uh, what's what's one of your uh, next projects coming up, if, if you don't mind sharing? So my next couple projects. So today there's a short film that I made, a Lego animated one I made last year, but never had a chance to upload it due to I didn't have a title for it. I just called it part one, right. but it's called Ninja Wars. Finally came mm -hmm. up with a title with it using a Ninjago minifigures. Okay. And it, the first part comes out today. It's a really short animation. It's just like kind of a starter to like a series. Mm. Um. And then Friday, I have my Sponge Glock idea coming out, right. or SpongeBob Rob's Krusty Krab. And uh, and then next week we have, I want to say the Rizzler. Okay. Uh, I did that uh, with a couple buddies, including yeah. uh, actually it was just one of my buddies, and then myself because my other buddies that were supposed to do voices uh, kind of just dropped out and got busy which yeah. I totally understand. I'm not mad at them at all. Of course, uh, of course. You know, life gets in the way sometimes and you just got to work around it. Yep. And uh, I do have an idea that I'm working on. Uh, I haven't even started animating it. I still got to get all the voices, which I just got to have time to record my lines. I got your lines though. And it's called yeah. Something Sussy Batman. For those that don't know, the, the, that project will be coming later in the works. Probably it'll either be shared here or like I said, if times comes uh i will remember to like share this on uh later days for like later either the next podcast or at least my next video coming for uh my main channel so don't worry for anybody that doesn't see it right here it will show up in the next podcast episode or at least the next video or event that i'm doing so don't so don't worry it'll be my my estimated time on it will be probably out sometime next month Gotcha. So no need to fear people. It'll be out no by next month. Fear. Yeah, everything's all good. Well, and then I got a series, like kind of like a mini series of Sonic the Hedgehog being an alcoholic that's in the works. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you've seen the Sonic has a hangover right. video, but I have this one called Sonic Hates Mario. Mm. And then I got this one I'm going to finish up today called Sonic Gets a DUI. Okay. So. And I'm not going to say any more because I want the rest of them to be a surprise. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, um, thank you for having. Thank, thanks for coming. And, Ain't no problem. It's and, my pleasure. Of course. Th thank you so much for coming. And uh, we will like see you all next time. Goodbye. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. So. Like I was saying before, this is going to be a little bit different because there's going to be a whole lot of new productions and stuff going on, which will be explained more later. Not into this detail, but like I said, more later. And as you can see from this shirt, I have worked into the Orlando Fest, so this is a big shout-out to them. And also a big shout-out to 
the BSU of Full Sail as well. Speaking of shout outs, um, our shout outs not only goes to our guest today, which is Ryan Shover, Forest Fire 101. Our main shout outs for this video, it goes to Open Japanese Android Gameplay, Mikori, Felix Vox, Briz, and Crazy La. Now, one of the next things that are coming up is, you know, the next thing that is happening is other episodes of this. And um, we're still, uh, still, the things are in the works of not only just the Q&A, but uh, the celebration of the second anniversary. But also for my main channel coming up very later within this month is going to be my fifth anniversary of my main channel at Onumo. So there, that is coming up. And as you can see, I was been working in the Music Orlando Fest. It was a very cool experience. And I really had myself a great time there. And like usual, this is where I have to take my leave. So goodbye. Talking from with